Hi guys, my name is Ken Gushi. I am the driver of the... I can't even say what I'm driving now actually because it's not even announced. Hey guys, I'm Ken Gushi, professional drift racer and Formula Drift for Toyota Gazoo Racing North America. Today I'm going to be answering commonly asked questions in Formula Drift. Do I get nervous before a run? Yes I do. I started competing in Formula Drift about 18 years ago and at the time I thought that through the years I would get less and less nervous, especially for qualifying runs. But till this day, I still get very nervous, if not more nervous now than I have ever been in the past 18 years. Uh, my first podium in my professional career would have to be May 4th and 5th, 2003 at Laguna Seca uh, when I was driving my very first car competing in the uh, International Drift Shootout against some of the best Japanese drivers at the time. I actually won that event. My first car that I can call mine personally was a 1992 240SX uh, that my father had bought for me when I was I say 12 years old. It was champagne in color, brand interior. Um, probably my favorite combo of the colors, like champagne exterior, brown interior. I called it the poop color, but yeah, it was super clean, um, very cheap at the time, um, and the perfect first learner's car for me. Uh, the most expensive part on my current uh, Formula Drift Pro car, which is the GR Supra, would have to be the engine. The engine cost, or the cost to build a competitive engine, uh, far exceeds any other part on the car. I would actually love to see uh, the Worthouse Boys or James Dean and Peter Wiecek come back to Formula Drift because I think those guys or that duo really uh, raised the bar in competitive drifting, not just in Formula Drift but in, across the globe. If not those two, if so, if not Peter or James and we're strictly talking about upcoming talent. I have a very close friend in Japan, uh, Shinji Minowa, who runs Heyman Products, and his wife, Masayo, also competes in FDJ. Uh, in fact, both of them do. But now, uh, there is a third member to the Heyman team, and it's their 12-year-old son, who's still in middle school. But this guy kicks so much ass, and he actually started from sim racing, or a set of course, and I've actually played with him a couple times online, and. Just recently, he uh, competed, qualified sixth among all these you know, talented older drivers, won his first tandem competition, and uh, you know, really showed the talent that he has, or actually proved to the world that you know, this 12-year-old kid has so much talent. So um, I even posted on my story that you know, this kid, or mark my words, because this kid one day is going to be a Formula Drift champion. Where do I buy all my car parts? Um, well, it depends on what I need, but I find myself spending a lot of time on Amazon, on eBay, Summit, Jags. But if I need like specific parts, you know, hit up the vendors, see like Gretti Performance, Evasive, or even go directly to the manufacturer. If not, like, so if it's something that I need to make custom that no one makes, I'm just go to like a local, uh, metal supply store, IMS, IPS, and just make the part myself. Um, usually, companies like HPS also has like raw material, like aluminum bends, um, steel bends, steel pipes. Um, so it just depends. I go pretty much anywhere that sells a part. In my opinion, uh, the best beginner's drift car actually has changed throughout the years. Um, if you had asked me the same question about 10, 15 years ago, I would have easily said, AE86, you know, Nissan 240SX, uh, FCR X7. Gone, gone are the days when you can even afford those cars and now if you find one, they're pretty much collector's items now and prices have skyrocketed. So uh, I would have to say nowadays it would be, you know, Scion FRS or the Toyota 86, um, Nissan 350Z, 370Z, the Mustangs. The best way to find sponsors is to, you know, have a strong social media presence. You don't have to necessarily have a big following, but be consistent on the content that you post and be be, be aware of the branded content that 
you're willing to post and you know show professionalism and then with that base you can approach you know whoever you want to approach as a sponsor be like hey look this is what i have to offer this is what i do i compete in formula drift uh, this is my car i would love to promote your brand and have your products on the car or you can have that in written form as a proposal deck um, you know basically lay out your uh, program who you are what you do where you come from uh, what you're trying to achieve what series you're running in and then you know send that proposal deck to them and write the off like basically show them what you can offer like you're gonna have a logo on the car you're gonna have videos monthly or after every event post event debriefs uh, media content for them to use or assets that they can use on their own channels um, stuff like that there's a lot of ways to approach sponsors but those are the basic fundamentals of what you should be doing before you approach anyone I, I don't have a girlfriend but I do have no, it depends on when you're gonna ask me because I guess I'm I'm trying to get a girl like I'm I'm trying to hit on this girl right so I like her a lot she's she's really cool the simple answer is no I don't have a girl right <laughs> um, throughout the off season there's not much going on as far as the uh, comp car goes the GR Supra so I like to spend a lot of my time working on you know special projects like my IS 300 or the shop cars like the GS that we have outside. Um, this year, we're actually building a special IS300 for our third uh, Threes Racing member, Meng T. Uh, it's a Honda engine-powered IS300 that we showcased at Irwindale, um, but we're actually going to start finishing and trying to make it to an event in late December. But there are really special projects coming up um, that I will be debuting soon, so if you guys want to check it out, you guys can hit up my YouTube channel, uh, Kanguishi Motorsports, for a lot of the updated stuff. So this year was very special for me and one, it was actually my worst season to date as far as my um, performance goes. Not, not just because of the performance, but we just had a lot of un unlucky uh, instances and happenings. But even through that, I had felt so much fan support. So I just want to say thank you guys. I really appreciate it, especially coming from, you know, a COVID year and coming back to a full eight round season and just seeing all the fans was really, really something that I, I, I really appreciate and I think I can all I can say the same thing or I can speak on behalf of all the teams and drivers that were out there that we really appreciated seeing all the fans in person back at the venue and you know just full of energy and excitement so thank you guys for that but you know yeah you're, you're right the holidays are coming I just want to say uh, stay safe stay healthy enjoy the holidays and uh, we will see you guys next year